What does mean mean mean? The mean, often referred to as the mean average, is a term we use in mathematics. And in this video, we're going to show you how to calculate it and exactly what it means. So what does the mean mean? And I promise I won't keep saying that from now on, but it is a term in maths that we need to be familiar with. And you may have heard it called the average. Now, when we try and find the mean, it's asking you to find a type of average. There are other averages that you may be asked to find that we'll cover in future videos, such as the mode or the range. But we're going to focus on the mean, and it's the most common way to find the average of a set of data. So I think the first thing that I want to explain to you is when it's used in real life contexts. And you might already be thinking of, ah, I've heard of the word average before. I kind of know what it means. Well, here are some real life contexts for you. So you might have heard of average height. If you have a classroom of children, their average height would be the rough size of them if you were to take it as a whole. So you might have the shortest child in the class, the tallest child in the class, and the average might be somewhere in the middle. And middle is going to be a key word. You may have also heard it as an average score. You may have uh, the game of cricket where the batsman scores runs. And over the season, they get scores like 50, 87, maybe even a zero. And over the season, those scores are put together to give an average. And that is the likely score that that batsman would get per game. And the final example I've got for you is the average temperature. If you're going away on holiday at all, you may look at the weather forecast and it might say the average temperature for this time of year is 26 degrees. And what they've done is they've gone from that time of year, last year, the year before that, the year before that, and kept going back and taken an average. And it gives you a rough idea of what to expect. But how can we possibly calculate this? Well, I'm going to show you how to calculate the mean of any set of data accurately all of the time, so let's dive in. So we're going to try and find the mean of a really simple set of data. On the screen you can see we've got three people who've got two donuts, five donuts, and two donuts again. And you might be asked to calculate the average number of donuts each person has. Now how would you go about this? Well, the first person's got two, the last person's got two, Someone has way more, which is five. So the lowest number is two, the highest number is five. So you know your average should be somewhere in between those two pieces of data. But here's how you calculate the mean. So what we do is we take all of the data, in this case, all of the donuts, and we're going to put them all together. We're going to add them up. So we have two donuts that I dragged down here. I'm going to take the five donuts and put them in the same pile. So two plus five is seven. And then I take the final two donuts drag them down, and in total, we have nine donuts. So that's step one, add up all of your data. Once you've added up all of the data, and in this case, we've got nine donuts in total, you then equally share that data out between the number of data points you had in the first place. And by a data point, I just mean those numbers you started off with. We had three people, we had three numbers. So we've got a total of nine, and now we're going to divide by three because that's how many numbers we had nine divided by three using your times table knowledge you should know is three and i'm going to prove it to you now by sharing the back out so one two three one two three one two three so on average a person had three donuts now no no one actually had three donuts in the first place so averages aren't always the most accurate way of saying what people have but they give you a really good middle ground a really good rough idea so to go over those steps again add up all of the numbers and then divide by the total number of numbers you had to start off with in this case two plus five plus two is nine divided by three is three the mean average for this set of data is three right then so now we've got our formula add up all of the numbers and divide by the total piece of data you had. Whilst I'm talking here, you might already be able to calculate the mean average of this set of data. So first step, add them all up, then divide by how many numbers we have in total. So let's see if we can spot any shortcuts here. Well, I'm going to add these numbers up. I'm going to add up mentally. I'm always looking for number bonds to try and make things quicker. I know that 11 add nine is 20. So that's a really quick one in my head. I also know that four plus five is nine, so that's 29. Add on seven, I'm gonna count on 30 up to, yep, 36. And then finally, plus 18. Now I'm not gonna do that one on my head, I'm going to make sure. 36 
plus 18, I'm going to use the column method, 6 plus 8 is 14, 3 plus 1 plus 110, that's 5 tens in total, aha, I have the answer 54. But beware, that is not the mean, we've only done one step. Now that we've got 54, I'm going to write it down here, and hopefully you can remember our final step. I'm going to count up how many pieces of data I had. One, two, three, four, five, six pieces of data. So I know for my final step to calculate the mean average, I divide by six. Again, hopefully you know your times table facts. How many sixes are in 54? The answer is nine. The mean average for this set of data is nine. Now, once you've got that formula sorted, it works for any set of numbers. Now, that doesn't matter how big or how small they are. So on the board, I've got last season's Premier League table and I've got the top four teams. Now, you might be asked to work out the average number of points these four teams scored when put together. Well, you know the formula now. Why don't you try and race me at home, see if you can get the answer quicker than I can. So I'm going to find the total of all of these numbers, my goodness. A little trick when you're adding up more than one number using the column method. With addition, you can add as many as you like underneath. I'm actually going to put all four numbers underneath each other and use my mental arithmetic to answer this in one big go. It's like a huge sandwich, but I'm gonna do it. See if you can beat me. Six plus four is 10, plus nine is 19, plus seven is 26. So I put the six and I exchange over two tens. Now we're going to the tens column. I'm going to actually add them up in a different order to make it easier for myself. Eight plus two is 10. Six plus six is 12, so that's 22. Add the seven is 29. 296. But that's not the mean. Step two, always remember step two. I had four pieces of data. So I'm going to take my total, 296, and I'm going to use the bus stop method this time, because it's a larger number, I can't just rely on my times tables anymore, to divide it by four. The average number of points scored by the top four teams in the Premier League last season was 74 points. You can calculate the mean average now, easy. Now, this formula really does work for any set of data. Large numbers, small numbers, but it also works for decimal numbers, and incredibly, it works for negative numbers. And I just want to show you how to calculate the mean of a set of data that includes negative numbers, because it can be quite tricky to get your head around. On the board, you'll see a table. Now, this table has days of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and each day has a temperature recorded. Uh, so. You know, step one, we've got to add up all of these data points. So four plus two is six. So we're on six, we've done these two. Done, done. I'm gonna skip the negative number for now. Plus three is nine. Okay, so I've done these three. Plus zero, well, that's just still nine, right? So I'm gonna add zero, which is not really doing anything, but I'll tick it off. And I'm at nine. And now I've got to do nine plus minus four. Now this seems more complicated than it is. If you add a negative number, essentially what you've just got to do is subtract it. So we've got nine and we're gonna take off that four. It's really easy to remember because there's literally a subtraction symbol there. Those minus sign and the subtraction symbol are very similar. So just take four off. So when we add together, find the total, if there's a negative number, we just switch to subtracting. So nine take away four is five. So the total of our set of data is five. Is that the mean average? No. You've got to divide by the total number of data points you have. And we have one, two, three, four, five separate pieces of data. Five divided by five. The answer is one degree centigrade. The average temperature for that week was one degree centigrade. Don't be put off by negatives. You can still calculate the mean average. Now you have the code you can crack any mean average for any set of data. And I've not given you an easy one to have a go at. So on the screen, you've got another table. This one is Mr. Stevens' golf score. Now with the game of golf, you can go above par or below par, which generates positive numbers and negative numbers. What I need you to do is leave me a comment down below and tell me what was the mean average of Mr. Stevens' five golf rounds that week. I'm not gonna tell you what to do, Click back in the video if you want to rewatch for some help. But if you have an answer, do put it down below. And I can't wait to see if you can prove to me you can calculate the mean average. So there we have it, the method you need to be able to calculate the mean in any situation, whether it's negative numbers, decimal numbers, or even using zero. That 
formula will work all of the time. As always, we've got loads of content lined up to help you prepare at home. So please be sure to hit the like button on this video if you found it useful and smash that subscribe button so that you'll be the first to know in the future when we have a new upload. See you next time.